the past couple of years, the Lord has been putting a fresh burden on my heart. And I've been sharing bits and pieces of it with you on the broadcast and through our various other outlets. But today I want to share a bit more fully. I don't know that we've ever devoted a whole program to something this specific. But this is really on my heart. And I want to encourage you, whatever you're doing right now, short of if you're in the car driving somewhere that you have to get to at a certain time, then I want to encourage you to stop if you can, to listen carefully and to ask the Lord what part he might want you to have in this undertaking. Now, I'm sure that your heart is heavy, as is mine, as we see the proliferation of violence, the celebration of evil in our world, as we see this nation having lost any sense of moral compass that it may once have had, and systematically standing against the word of God and the gospel of Christ. And it's not getting better. I cannot even begin to imagine where it's all heading, but we were saying that a few years ago, we could not have imagined we would be where we are today. And if we ever wondered, it's become increasingly clear that our hope is not in any human institution or solutions, including in the political arena, right? There's a lot of hand-wringing over the options before us right now in the United States of America. And I think we're all understanding that nothing short of divine intervention will do. But this is not a time for retreat. This is not a time for despair. This is a time for us to turn our hearts and our eyes toward heaven and earnestly appeal to the God of the universe for help. And that's why on Friday evening, September 23rd, Revive Our Hearts, along with several other ministry partners, is going to be hosting something we're calling Cry Out. It's a nationwide prayer event for women. Now, many of you are aware that we have the True Woman Conference coming up, as we do every other year in the fall. It'll be September 22 through 24. And we're expecting about 6,500 women to join us in Indianapolis. By the way, it's not too late for you to register for that. We still have some seats left. We do expect to sell out shortly. So if you're planning to come to Indy, you need to get your registration in. But this time, as part of that event, where only 6,500 women can come. That's the cap. That's the most we can handle this time. We're going to do something we've never done before. And that is on Friday evening, September 23rd, in the middle of that conference, we're going to be hosting a three-hour nationwide simulcast prayer meeting. And I want to unpack that for you a little bit because people have been asking questions. They're good questions. And I want to just give you a sense of what all that means. But here's the bottom line. We're asking the Lord to bring together at least 100,000 women that evening. It could end up being hundreds of thousands of women to cry out to him in united, fervent, focused prayer. Now, we have women in this room today from all over the United States. And I want you to just imagine where you come from. And imagine women gathering in your hometown, in the place where you live, in churches here and there, in homes, in schools, in businesses, gathering in groups. And then imagine women gathering in thousands of locations all across this country, in all sorts of venues, in groups of various sizes. Some may be 20, some may be 200, some may be 2,000. But they're coming together to pray and to link arms with women who are praying in all those other locations, beginning with the host site in Indianapolis. All together, joining our hearts for three hours to cry out to the Lord. And thanks to the involvement of a number of friends of the ministry, we're offering this simulcast to groups of any size at no charge. Thrilled to be able to do that. And our agenda is very simple. It's to humble ourselves before the God of heaven, and to cry out to him on behalf of our world, our nation, our churches, our communities, our homes. I was just reading uh, in the news, you've been hearing about the, the violence going on in Chicago. Just one city, and it's not the only one. I mean, you just pull up the news every day and it's something new, but it's really more of the same. And we need to be crying out to the Lord, as many are already and have been, on behalf of our cities, our homes, pleading with God for mercy. We don't deserve it and for supernatural intervention. Now, there are a number of other ministries that have a similar heart who are partnering with us in this undertaking. That includes Moms in Prayer, so thankful for their involvement, uh, both at the conference and in the prayer meeting that night. One Cry, part of our Parent Ministry Life Action, and others are partnering with us. 
You may have heard the name Bob Bakke, who's been involved for many years in prayer efforts across the United States and around the world, the National Global Day of Prayer. He's going to be leading the evening with me. And the focus is not going to be on big name speakers, but it's simply going to be on crying out to the Lord. However, there are a number of Christian leaders and intercessors who will be joining us and participating with us that evening from around the country. That includes people like Johnny Erickson Tata, Kay Arthur, Janet Parshall, Stephen Kendrick, who will be speaking to us at the event and then participating that night, and many others as well. Now, you may be wondering, as you've been hearing about this, what in the world are we going to do for three whole hours? Will I be bored? People have actually asked that. Will I be uncomfortable? Will I have to pray out loud? And these are good questions. They're honest questions. Things that you or others you know may be wondering about cry out. Well, let me just say, first of all, you will not be bored. The time is going to pass very quickly. You'll wonder where it went and how it went so fast. It's going to be a very interactive evening. It's going to include a lot of variety. There will be different segments, meaningful, short, meaningful segments that will include singing to the Lord, reading scripture together, listening to short messages about the spiritual condition and the needs of various uh, components, areas of our land and of our culture, being led in prayer by different speakers and leaders, and then praying in small groups about specific concerns that are addressed. And I want to just say this, no one, no matter what size your group, is going to be pressured to pray out loud. If you're going to try, this would probably be a good place to try. But if that's not something you're comfortable with, you can be there, you can participate, you can pray in your heart. The Lord can hear all that. And all of these things we're going to be doing together. 6,000 plus women in, Indian in Indianapolis joining with potentially hundreds of thousands of other women in thousands of other locations. I, I just get so excited thinking about this, what this would be like. I don't know that anything quite like this has ever happened, where we're joining our hearts as women together to cry out to the Lord, bowing before the throne of heaven and pleading with the God of the universe to intervene, praying for his kingdom to come in our world, and in our day. Now, leading up to the actual event, which is why it's important that you get signed up, there will be 10 days of heart preparation. Now, it was after 10 days of heart preparation that the Lord came, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost. And I'm not saying that's what will happen here, but I do think it's important to prepare our hearts to cry out to the Lord, to make sure that we're ready to pray that we're ready to seek him, that our hearts are tuned. And so our team has been developing a resource that will be available through the internet, through email, where every day for 10 days leading up to September 23rd, you can have a little devotional, scripture, how to pray to get your heart ready for this actual event so that when that time comes, we will be ready to pray and to cry out together to the Lord. And then following the event, we're gonna encourage and mobilize and resource women to keep praying together. And that will look different ways. Some groups may want to continue as that group. They may want to form other groups. Uh, but especially to continue praying in the six weeks between that night, uh, September 23rd, and our national election six weeks later. But this is not a political event. We're praying for our country, for our leaders, because God has commanded us to do that. But we're going to pray about a lot of other things as well and not pray just up to our election, but beyond that because we need it desperately. So as impacting as this single event could be, we also realize the need to encourage ongoing movements of prayer for revival and awakening. And I'm believing that this event could be catalytic in helping to spark that kind of prayer moving forward. Now, it's easy for us as women to feel hopeless and helpless as we consider the magnitude of the problems facing our nation and our world today. What can we do against such a tidal wave of evil? And as I've taken to saying in recent days, craziness. And evil does make things crazy. Well, I don't think that most Christian women realize the incredible influence they have in our culture, in their churches, their homes, and their communities. And for sure, there is one thing we can do. Perhaps the most important thing we can do, and that's to join together in united prayer and cry out to God. You know, throughout the scripture and then again throughout history, when there have been similar situations, desperate times, over and over again, God's people 
would go to prayer and they would cry out and God would hear and he would intervene. Let me just read you one example found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites, and with them some of the Munites, came against Jehoshaphat, the king of the southern nation of Judah, for battle. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, a great multitude is coming against you from Edom, far from beyond the sea. Then Jehoshaphat was afraid. Of course he was. You would be too. I would be too. So what did he do? He didn't first call out the army. He first set his face to seek the Lord. And he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah assembled to seek help from the Lord. From all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord, before the new court, and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? So he didn't focus on the enemy. He didn't say, you see these Munites and these Moabites and these Ammonites. He said, God, you are God. You are over and above all of these powers. You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. In your hand are power and might so that none is able to withstand you. So he starts with worship. He starts with exalting God. He starts by lifting his eyes up. And then beginning in verse 10, this is 2 Chronicles 20, he tells God the situation. Not like God didn't know the situation, but he says, this is what we're up against. And then he ends in that very familiar verse 12. Oh God, we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That's the prayer. We don't know what to do. We are powerless, but our eyes are on you. Same concept in Esther's day when God's people were threatened with annihilation and two Jews, Mordecai and Esther, called people to fast and to turn to the Lord and God heard. He intervened. His people were spared. Disaster was averted. I don't think we will ever know what it is God could do in our day if we don't stop what we're doing and start getting on our knees and calling out to the Lord together to intervene. Jeremiah chapter 9, at a time when Israel was in great distress, the scripture says, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Consider now, call for the wailing women to come. Send for the most skillful of them. Let them come quickly and wail over us. These, of course, are mourners. They're saying there's been a death. There's death in the streets. Call for these wailing mourning women to come. Let them come quickly and wail over us till our eyes overflow with tears and water streams from our eyelids. And that is exactly what we're planning to do through cry out. Call for the wailing women to come. And it's time for us to stop wailing at each other. Say, oh, isn't this awful? Wringing our hands. This is so awful. What do you think? This is, you know, who's going to do this and who's going to do that? Stop wringing our hands. Get on our knees. Join our hands together and cry out to the Lord God of heaven. Now, there are a lot of prayer initiatives taking place this year, and many of them with a similar burden. And I'm so thankful for every one of them and for how God is calling his people to prayer. We can't have too much of that. In fact, there's another one happening in Dallas, Texas, the same week as this one. But I'm not aware of any other initiative that is specifically appealing to women to come together in corporate prayer. There may be one. If there is, I'm thrilled for it. But I think this is something unique. And what could be more vital more critical for such a time as this than for women to get on their knees together and to cry out to the Lord, repenting, pleading with him to have mercy and to intervene in our world. Here's a promise from Psalm 34, 17. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. I love that. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears. In 1857, America was in the throes of the Industrial Revolution. People were making money hand over fist. And, when they, uh, and, they, and, they, and they felt self-sufficient. They didn't feel like they needed God. And there was a businessman in New York City named Jeremiah Lanfear who saw this condition, and he said, we need to start praying. We need to start crying out to the Lord. So he posted a notice in New York City, and he said, next week, September 23rd, there's going to be a prayer meeting at noon during the lunch break. And when that day came, September 23rd, six people showed up at the church to pray. 
pretty small beginning. And I don't know about you, but I think if that had been the outcome, I would have thought, maybe this isn't the right time. Maybe I'm not the right person. Maybe we just need to move on. But Landfear posted again and said, let's come back next week and pray and ask God to come and meet with us. And the next week, 20 showed up. And they said, let's come again next week. And the next week, 40 showed up. And the following week, it was a great financial crash throughout the country. And all of a sudden, you know where people were who didn't think they needed God, who had all the money, now they had nothing. What did they do? They came to church. They came to pray. They said, we need God now. And all of a sudden, those empty dead churches were filled with people, not just at noonday, not just at lunchtime, not just one day a week, but every day of week, through the noon hour, through the day, through the night, praying and crying out to God to come and visit them. Some people estimate that one million people came to faith in Christ as a result of what became known as the Great Prayer Revival of 1857 and 1858, just over a several-month period. Well, in God's providence, we didn't know this when we picked the date. We just had arranged it with the convention center. This is the date they had open for the True Woman Conference. As the Lord would have it, I love living under providence, thousands of women will be coming together to pray on September 23rd. Same date as when that prayer, great prayer meeting in 1857 started. September 23rd. And I don't know what God will choose to do this time. It won't look like it did in 1857 or in any other great revival or awakening. God knows what's in his heart. But our prayer is, Lord, would you do it again? Do it again. Would you come? Would you move? We're praying to a God who hears, who cares, who can help. He has done it in the past. He can do it again. Calling, turning the hearts of his people first, and then the heart of the nation, the heart of nations of the world to come and seek the Lord, as one day all peoples of the world will do. So we're praying, Lord, have your way. Bring your kingdom to come in this world and have your will done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, this is a major undertaking. It's a costly undertaking. It's costly in terms of our time, our staff. I didn't know when we first launched this that I would be now married and uh, with a much fuller life, if that was possible. And um, so there are things, it's expensive financially. It's a, a cost, great cost to the ministry to promote this and make this happen. But we're stepping out in faith because we believe this is something we have to do. We've got to do this. And I'm appealing to you to join with us. And I don't mean, like, if you're listening to this right now, I don't want you to think, oh, I hope my pastor's wife or I hope our, our women's ministry director or I hope this praying woman I know at my church, I hope they get a burden for this. I hope you will get a burden for this. God may not use somebody else that normally is the person who does this kind of thing. You may never have done anything like this before, but God is speaking to your heart. I've watched as I've shared this with women over the last few months. There are just some in every crowd that come up and afterwards and say, we have to be a part of this. I have to do something. God's putting this on my heart. And so here are a few ways that you can be involved, and we'll be letting you know more about that in the days ahead. But first of all, start praying. Don't wait till September 23rd to pray. Pray for revival, for awakening, for divine intervention. Pray for God's help and his blessing on this undertaking. Start praying. And then go to cryout16.com and sign up to join the prayer meeting on September 23rd. Wherever you're going to be that night, sign up to be a part of that. Circle the day on your calendar. Make sure you don't have anything else come up that evening. Uh, and you can sign up for that at cryout16.com. There are a lot more details there about the time and how you do this. And then I want you to pray about getting a group of women together in your church or your community that evening. We've already had 1,200 women go to the website and say we want to host a group. I'm praying there'll be thousands of such groups around the country. And encourage the people in your sphere of influence to participate together in this special evening of crying out together. One woman in um, Texas I heard about recently who said, I'm going to rent the convention center. 
and we're going to call people in our town to come and pray and cry out to the Lord. I have some, some of our staff just gave me some illustrations of what people are doing already. There's a major seminary in the southwest that is using this and coming around it, making it available through their uh, student wives, moms group, etc. And they say, yes, we want to be a part of this. Uh, here's a group in western Kentucky getting groups together to participate via the simulcast, which by the way, people are saying, what is a simulcast? Like, I don't know how to do that. You just have to um, have an internet connection that's fast enough to stream video and then a screen large enough for the participants to see well. And if you say, I don't, I couldn't do that. There's, you know, ask your 14 year old grandson. <laughs> he knows how to do it. Um, and there are people in your church, people in your life, you don't have to be the technical person. I'm not the technical person for sure in all of this, but we have people around us who know how to do this. But it's very simple. When we say simulcast, that sounds like, oh, that's something I don't think I could do. Yes, you can do it. If you have an internet connection, uh, even it'll be available on some major uh, national radio networks. You could do it that way, but if you do it through the internet, you'll be able to see and hear and really participate in what's going on. You're not going to be spectating. You're going to be part of this great assembly of women coming together to cry out. Here's a, a church in Michigan that's opening, uh, hosting Friday night for their whole community. Um, here's a lady in Brazil who wants to host a gathering in her home and translate it into Portuguese as it's taking place. So you probably won't have to go to that much effort. Here's a group in rural South Dakota who says, we have a church lined up with internet and indoor plumbing, a plus in rural <laughs> South Dakota. She says, my goal is to invite all the little churches in the area to join us for this prayer time. Here's another group that's actually going to host the entire conference Friday and Saturday for True Woman, in addition to the Friday evening cry out portion, they're creating a mini conference at the church with meals and snacks and inviting all of the churches within a several hour radius to come and be a part of this. So it's a way your church can serve your community, but there may be lots of churches in your community or it doesn't have to be in a church. You might get 20 women together in your home, but you want to do this together with other women. And uh, if you have questions about how to do this, Contact our ministry. We'll help you. You'll find a lot of your questions answered at cryout16.com. But our team is here to serve you, to help you. If you say, I just have a burden for this, but I don't know how to get started, we have resources. We have things you can hand out. A lot of those are things you can download from that website, church bulletins, all of that kind of thing is available. Now, the burden for this event really began a couple of years ago when a lifelong friend of mine named Vonette Bright said to me, honey, we've got to get women praying for revival. She said, I, I, I want to see 100,000 women come together and pray for revival. And I could not have fathomed how that would happen. And uh, she pestered me. She kept calling me. She had leukemia. She had cancer. She was getting sick. She was um, not doing well. And in fact, just several months ago, she went home to be with the Lord. But before she did, she handed me this baton. <laughs> And she was a woman of prayer. God used Vonette greatly as the one who lobbied Congress back in the 1970s to get Congress to announce a, an annual national day of prayer. She just, she didn't let go. And she worked day and night getting women to pray. And I'm going, who, who's doing that in this generation? Well, she said to me, I want you to be one of those people who does that. And um, so I'm trying to be one of those people. Call for the wailing women to come. Let them come quickly. So I want to invite you, come, join us, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that night, September 23rd, cry out together when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears.